Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Connolly with Scratch Golf Tips, and today we're going to be looking at the golf swing of Xander Schauffele, more specifically his iron swing. Now, if you've watched this channel for a little while, you probably know that Xander Schauffele's swing is my favorite swing on the PGA Tour and in professional golf in general. There are so many things that I love about it, so I thought we would look at the iron swing first and in this video break down a few things that he does in the iron swing that not only do I really like from an instructional standpoint, but I also think many people can learn from in, in order to improve their own golf swing. So first, just talking about the stance, Shoffley has gone on record to say that he doesn't really have any particular thoughts when it comes to his stance outside of wanting to be athletic and he does step into the ball with a fairly natural athletic stance. There's a little bit more knee bend than we see uh, in, in a lot of golfers that may be because Shoffley does leverage the ground a lot through the swing. So having that knee bend creates a stable base for him. But in terms of the setup, I would recommend for people at home to not get too overly consumed with particular aspects of the setup, like have your feet exactly this far apart, put the ball exactly here. One, I want everyone at home to be standing athletically to the ball. And number two is do what feels the most comfortable to you. For some people, uh, they might really like to stand up a little bit straighter. It also depends on the clubs you're hitting, the, uh, how those clubs are configured in terms of lying on whatnot. So as long as it's something that you're comfortable with and you can do consistently, roll with it. Now, in terms of the actual iron swing itself, the thing that I think is most pretty visually on Xander Schauffele's swing is the swing tempo that he does utilize. He has a very, very clean tempo. It seems like he sweeps the club along the ground with the takeaway, and then through the ball, his move through transition is not very quick. Uh, it almost, you know, Schauffele obviously has a lot of distance on the golf ball. He hits the ball plenty far for someone his size, but it doesn't look like he's swinging crazy hard at the ball. And I think that that just comes down to how effortless his motion is through transition. So in the transitionary move, Shoffley's hips actually begin the downswing. And because those hips begin the downswing, that left elbow actually has a, some slight bend to it in the top of the backswing and through transition. Now, I know that in the takeaway, a lot of instructors say that it's not good to have any bend in that lead elbow for right-handed golf, where I'm referring to the left elbow. And largely that is true, but people can absolutely get away with having some bend in it. Victor Hovland is one of those individuals who has obviously seen some great success while doing it. And uh, Shoffle does it in his transitionary move. I think that this is a, a fine thing to have happen if you're controlled in your tempo and swing rhythm. The benefit that golfers get from having that straight left arm is that the distance that the club is away from the body remains controlled. If that arm is bent, it'll bend in a little bit more or it'll straighten out. The distance that the club faces away from the body will be ever changing. And if it's ever changing, then we're going to see a natural lack of consistency in our ball striking. The reason that it works for someone like Xander Schauffele or Victor Hovland is because they're professional golfers who spend a lot of time practicing. But if you're someone who can spend some time practicing, then having that arm kind of swing in a little bit at that top of the transitionary move, especially if your hips are beginning the downswing and you're using that rotational aspect of the lower body, then I think it's totally fine. Another aspect of the takeaway itself, aside from the tempo, is the swing width. I think Shoffley has some of the best width on tour. And when I'm speaking about swing width, I'm, sw I'm, I'm referring to the width of the circle at which the club travels, especially in the takeaway. How straight your left arm is and how far that arm is away from the trunk of your body, that, that's what controls your width. And the longer your width, the faster you can generally swing the golf club. This is especially important for golfers who really can't can't rely on their size uh, as maybe someone like Dustin Johnson or John Rahm. They don't really need as much width in their golf swing because they're so big and strong. Shoffle is a strong guy, but he's not overly tall. I believe he's 5'10", 5'11". So that width in the golf swing is an excellent way for him to allow in some more speed and obviously in turn get some more distance behind his shots. Now let's talk about impact positioning and what Shafi likes to feel. One of his main swing feels and something that his coach and his father, Stefan, has said is that he really likes a feeling of hammering the nail. And I think that having an impact feeling of hammering the nail is especially important when we're talking about iron play. Now, if you think about hammering a nail, you're going to come down into the nail. You know, it's kind of awkward to be hitting upward into a nail. So you want a downward strike with that hammer and that nail. Now take that image in your mind of hammering 
hammering a nail and apply it to a downward strike between club and ball. In this visual, the golf club is the hammer, the ball is the nail. And whilst that club comes into the ball, having that feeling of hammering the nail, especially in your right hand as you're releasing the club, as your fingers kind of travel around the wrist, that's what we call a release position, have that feeling of downward impact. And what that's gonna feel like is generally club hitting the ball, and then after that, continuing down into the grass. Most great golfers will take a divot after their ball because the low point of the golf swing with iron specifically is after the golf ball. Now the length and the size of that divot is dependent on a few things. One, if you're hitting a fade, you're going to have a little bit more of a deeper divot. You're gonna be a little bit steeper. But the more common thing that we should be addressing when talking about divot size and divot positioning is the club that you have. So your divot with a pitching wedge should definitely look different than what your divot is with a five iron, for instance. With a pitching wedge, you should have a thicker, bigger divot uh, that, that probably goes a little bit longer. With a five iron, you should be a little bit more shallow, not digging in as much, a little bit of a smaller divot. But let's get back to Shoffley swing at impact. One thing that I really wanna point out is uh, a few things about his heel. So we see heel movement in both the left and right heel throughout Shoffley swing. He has the left heel raise at the beginning of the golf swing, and that allows him a little bit more hip rotation and may for him allow a better feeling of a rhythmic swing. Uh, this is something that a lot of people turn to. So if this isn't something that you aren't particularly familiar with, I would invite you to at least try it on the range as you're taking the club back. Let that left heel just a little bit off the ground. Shoffley does it especially with driver to get some more speed and fluidity in the golf swing, but we'll also see him do it with iron swings as well. But in the impact positioning, his right heel comes off the ground at impact and even right before impact. That right heel coming off the ground is a really good signifier of proper weight transfer through the ball and proper weight transfer is obviously imperative for any great golfer. So I would encourage you to film your golf swing from a front on angle so that the camera is pointed to your chest and that's a good way to look at your weight transfer through the ball. It's very easy for people to be swaying and, and changing their spine alignment to the ground but having that face on camera angle can really allow you to get a better look at what you're doing rotation and what you're doing in terms of weight transfer. I hope you've learned a thing or two about Xander Shoffley's golf swing, especially the iron swing. There's so much to like. I may make a whole other video on his driver swing because he it is my favorite golf swing on tour. There are so many teachable aspects of it. And I think that Shoffley has plenty more wins in his future. I'd love to see him break through and get one of those majors, but big fan of him and his team. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments on anything that I mentioned or failed to mention, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you all very much for watching, play well, and take care.